Welcome back, friends. So today we're taking another look at the Jeep. Uh, this time we're gonna take a look at the charging system, the voltage, and just kind of all the different components and how to do some testing and uh, see if we can find an issue. My issue is that I believe I have low voltage coming out of the alternator. Um, whenever I test it, it just seems like the voltage is low and doesn't seem like the battery's ever getting a full charge. So uh, let's start it up, let me show you what it's doing, and then we'll, uh, we'll go over some testing procedures to see if we can narrow down to what might be the problem. All right, we're just gonna get this all hooked up here so that we can start it, and I can show you exactly what's going on. All right, 12.6, it's pretty much a full battery, though I've had it on a solar charger, but uh, let's start it. Boy, it's starting to get cold out here, and it looks like I have the measurement set wrong. Okay, so this is what we want, because this will allow us to see what's going on. So you can see the voltage is not very consistent. It's kind of bouncing all over the place. We're getting as low as 13.3, as high as 13.6 right now, which is funny. I've not really seen it that high in a long time after taking a look at this. Uh, but you can see it's not very consistent. It's kind of bouncing all over the place. Uh, so with that, there's some checks we need to do. Uh, also, the voltage isn't as high as it should be. Uh, I think it should be around 14 volts when you first start the vehicle just because you've pulled a lot of energy out of the battery and it's trying to replenish uh, that charge. So it uh, should be a lot higher, I think, but it doesn't look like it is. And again, it's bouncing all over the place. So let's turn it off. We'll, I'll show you how to do some checks. And then uh, we'll also go over the components that are there just so you can see what we're dealing with. Now that we're turned off, so there are four major components uh, to a Jeep's charging system, or really any newer vehicle. You're gonna have your alternator, produces the power. You have your battery, which uh, stores the power. You have your, your regulator, which on a Jeep is inside the computer itself. So hopefully there's nothing wrong with the regulator. And then four, you have your wires. The easiest thing to check first is your ground. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave it just like this. We're gonna leave the ground uh, probe hooked up to the negative of the battery. And we're just gonna take this and go to a bare spot on the body of the Jeep itself. So, right there. What this is doing is, it's kinda like a continuity check. Um, so the ground from the battery to the body of the Jeep shows nothing, that's good. Next one we're gonna go to is the alternator. We have nothing there. And then there's one more body spot you can connect to, and it's kind of up here in a Jeep. But essentially you just wanna to go to all the different spots that you ground to. Okay, we have nothing there. Now, we need to do this check one more time with the Jeep running, but uh, we'll do that in a minute. First, once you've done this and you realize there's no voltage there, you know your grounds are pretty much good. The next thing you'll wanna do is you'll wanna have a charge test done. So, um, you can take it to any auto parts. I went to AutoZone and I had them test the alternator and the battery with the Jeep running sitting there. Um, they said the regulator failed. So what I then did is I took the alternator out of the Jeep and had them test the alternator. They said alternator passed. So um, the alternator has both failed and passed according to them, except we know that the regulator is in the computer, not in the alternator. So that's kind of an issue. Second thing is the battery. My battery is a week and a half old. I just replaced it. So I know the battery is good and I had them test it. So we've tested the alternator. We've tested the battery. Uh, the last thing is the regulator. Now you can't really test those, uh, but before we get into that, let's do our one grounding test with the Jeep running to make sure we don't get any voltage uh, going through the system. And we're going to do the exact same thing I just did to test the grounds, just uh, we're going to have the Jeep running. So let's do that. Also, uh, working outside kind of sucks because it's starting to snow again and it's getting cold. So we got to hurry up and do this. All right, for sanity's sake, we're just going to go back to the battery here and make sure we're working. Okay. Voltage looks just as not great as it did before. So, just like before, we have I have the negative probe sitting on the battery, the negative of the battery. And I went to the body. Okay, so we have 0.01, so 0.01 volts, that's really nothing. There's a little bit there, so I probably could clean the ground a little bit. That's nothing big though, shouldn't cause an issue. Let's go to the alternator. Okay, we have 0.01 on the alternator too, zero. Again, that's really nothing. Um, I I'm not going to be concerned about that. And then we're going to go up here to this grounding bolt. And that one is 0.012. So there is a tiny bit of voltage there, but it's basically zero. Um, that's such a small amount. Now, if this number were a volt or two, 
or any higher, uh, then you'd want to be concerned. You'd want to go clean all your grounds and or replace them. Uh, that's a problem. With this case though, uh, we don't have any voltage feeding back through the system. All right, I gotta get these gloves on. It's, it's really starting to cool down. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've done a ground test. We have basically tested all the grounds to make sure there's no weird voltage feeding back through the system. Uh, the reason that's a problem is that on the TJ computers and probably most computers that have the regulator inside them, uh, if you have a voltage issue like that that's going through the ground, it can actually trick the computer into thinking that you have a full battery or that it doesn't need to charge. So that could be step one. Your charging issue could be as simple as you have a bad ground. So check the grounds first. It's the easiest thing to do. We tested the grounds and we know by doing that that the grounds tested good. We didn't see any weird voltage or anything and the grounds look like they're in good shape. So that's passed. Uh, we took the alternator to AutoZone, we tested it in the Jeep and outside the Jeep. They said it passed and it's good to go. So we know we're set there. The third thing is that we went and uh, the battery is brand new. It's only a week and a half old. Uh, it just got, it was getting old so I just replaced it. Uh, it was going bad. So we know that's new. Plus when we took the Jeep to AutoZone, they tested the battery too. Battery tested fine. So we know that's good. That leaves one last issue. Remember I said there were four total four components to a Jeep charging system and, or newer vehicle really. Um, and that's the regulator, which unfortunately is inside the computer on these vehicles. And that really sucks because they're really expensive to replace if you have a manual. If you have an automatic, it's like 250 bucks for the computer. If you have a manual, it's north of 700. Um, I kind of suspected that was the case. So I already went over and ordered a computer. It's on the way. Um, once it gets here, we'll do a video on how to replace that and see if it fixes my problem have a suspicion it will so stay tuned for that video and uh, yeah run, run through those tests just like I did it's the simplest way it's the cheapest way it's the easiest way it really costs you nothing so with that guys thank you for watching we'll see you next video